I'm going to start with color pencil and I'm going to do a two minute gesture drawing. So let's start with my timer. So I'm doing this on my phone and I'm just going to do two really quick gestures of these two women who have, wow, very impressive hair juice. And so what I try to do in the beginning is I wander a lot and I try to establish head, neck and shoulders as quickly as I can. I probably should draw darker than I actually do because most of the time I draw very light, but I think because the camera is not going to pick it up if I don't do that. So actually, let me move this down. There you go. Now you guys can see that a little bit better. Okay. So I don't think I will get that far on this. But again, this is a warm up, guys. This, this is nothing to do with trying to make it look good. We're just trying to get the approximate locations of things. Everything you do when you guys are drawing, think about it as an approximation. You're never going to nail it. I don't know anybody who does that. So don't worry about that. Like right now, I'm just saying, okay, the hand is about here. And I can already tell that I'm drawing way too dark. So I might cut back a little bit and try to get this neck a little bit better. Oh, dear. What a mess. <laughs> this is so bad, you guys. Oh, my God. I'm going to die. But so here's the thing, if I can do this live, you can do this in the privacy of your own home and not have to broadcast to everybody how terribly out of shape you are because you haven't drawn in a million years. It's been like way too long. Okay, I was lazy about this hand, so let's just block this in, get the legs in there. Gotta pay attention to the shirt. And I'm not gonna really try to put in the facial features because that's fruitless at this point. It's just too short of a pose. But I do like to accentuate, okay, well, here's the approximate location of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Okay, there we go. All right, guys, so that was my two-minute drawing. All right, Ang Viana is saying, do we have to post all four drawings? It's up to you guys, okay? If you want to just post one drawing, that's it. That will definitely fulfill the art prof dare. If you want to do four drawings per page, that's great as well. Okay. All right, good. Let's do another one. So let's go to these people here. I love this shot. This shot is really hilarious. Okay. Let's go to this guy. All right, here we go. Starting to warm up a little bit more. Okay. So let's see. So this guy has this funny head that looks like a waterfall. I'm going to try to get out his torso and I'm going to try to draw darker. It's hard for me to draw darker because I've trained myself to not draw darker, but I know on the camera, it's a little bit hard for you guys to see. Okay. He's got so many cats. I don't remember what he was doing in the scene, but there's a lot of little cats back here. And actually there's like a little doll thing here. Wow. There's gotta be like eight cats in this picture. I didn't realize there were so many of them. This one is sort of attacking the other. And I do think gesture drawing feels very mushy in the beginning. And that's fine, you guys. You don't have to feel like you are in control of the situation when you're drawing. It can feel very crazy, but it's like if you just honestly, guys, just give up. Say it's not going to be good. It's going to look crappy. And then actually it, it really releases you from a lot of other issues. Okay. All right, and I will do some that are a little bit longer. These are just my little warm ups. Normally, I would probably do an hour of two minute poses before I got to anything longer. I'm obviously not going to do that today because that will take a really long time. But I just want to get the basic shape of these cats back here. I don't even know what this thing is. This is like a little teddy bear over here in the corner. And I feel like I see a leg that's pushing up. And I want to get the ears. The ears are actually really helpful, I think, when you're drawing animals. Like when we did that cat drawing tutorial, I was really able to figure out the orientation when I was looking at the ears of the animals. Okay, and this guy, let's play with his hair a little more. I really want to draw his hair. He's got great hair. He's also got these sunglasses on and the darkness of his shirt, I think, is pretty important. Okay, cool. So we've got that one next. There's my timer. Let's start another one and I'll take a quick glance at the comments. Okay, let's see. Great. So Dorinka's taking care of you guys. I'm going to keep drawing. Let's go to the next image. This guy's 
yeah, I'm not going to comment on the characters. You guys can just watch it on your own. And I, I think you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I, I just find this such a funny still because the cat looks so tall and regal. And let's just say he doesn't look so regal. <laughs> All right, again, very quick gesture to block out the major masses. Those of you guys who have been watching my anatomy streams probably know what I'm talking about right now. And this figure, he's really defined by this jacket he's wearing. So I'm really going to pay attention to some of these flaps. I don't usually do that, but in this case, it's pretty defining as far as his form goes. And then I got to look, okay, I think I put the Okay, I think the ear should actually be over here. Sorry, I'm, I keep going off the page. All right, let's get in the, um, I think the nose is about here. Let's just approximate this. Oh crap, I totally made that too high. Okay, so what you guys can see probably is that already I'm making lots of changes. Like I definitely put the tiger up too high. Now I'm gonna lower it down here. Let's get the foot down there and little bit of fluff. I want to just at least show his ears and some indication of his neck and his shoulders like that. Okay. Oops, I forgot to set my timer. I'll just start it for one minute. Okay, there we go. So we'll go for one more minute on this one as a quick warm up. Now, of course, if you change one thing, you got to change everything else. And that's what I think is challenging. And that's why actually, I think a lot of people don't want to make changes because they end up saying, oh, I spent so much time on that. I don't want to fix that again. But the thing is, you don't really want to sit there and accept something that really just does not work at all. And so it's, it's not as fun to have to do it that way, but it definitely makes a difference as far as the way the drawing comes along. Okay, I should at least indicate some of the lighting, a bit of his collar, some of the motion of his shirt. And the cat, I think, needs better defining features, maybe begin to do a little bit of an indication of shading, but I really think I need the mouth, actually, because the mouth is not happening. The eye is way too high. Sheesh. Guys, I am so not in shape. Okay, I need to get this hand in there. Okay, there's my timer. Okay, I'm going to take a look in the comments. <laughs> Devan says that it's Mario Batali. Yep. Ironhold Century says, Tiger King is so beyond normality that every feature is so intriguing to me. Salty Person is saying, it's so cool seeing the lines go from just being lines to figures. And Lux is saying, yep, there's a lot of issues with having pet tigers. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even watched the whole thing yet, but for sure, there's a lot of really sticky stuff in that documentary. Okay, let's do another one. So let's go and find this next person. Okay, so now we have Joe Exotic himself. And this one's a little bit more of a close up. So I'll be able to get more into his features. So I think I'm going to actually make this one a little bit longer. So usually I'll do a bunch of two minute drawings and then I'll segue to a five minute drawing. So let's make this one a five minute drawing and I'm going to stick with colored pencil. Maybe in a little bit I'll switch to the brush pen. But for now, let's start with this. Okay, let's see, need my reference photo. And again, if you guys have questions, talk to Dorinka because I can't really do that, <laughs> read comments and draw at the same time. Okay, so let me get, I'm gonna draw him a lot bigger this time because that way we'll be able to see things better. And I'm sorry, I know I draw really light. I really should draw darker so the camera can capture everything. And what I'm noticing right away is that he is a little tilted I made him a little bit too straight, so I have to get that gesture a little bit better. So I'm going to tilt his mustache and jawbone a bit, and his neck also a little bit more tilted. He's got this, like, look at his shirt is, like, falling off him. <laughs> so when he's got this chain, the hat is a very draw, uh, strong feature in this. So I'm going to add the hat pretty dramatically, his hair. I think I made him a little too long, but let's just leave it. This might need to come down. A little bit more later. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay. And then I got to get the shoulders in. So you guys will notice when I'm doing these drawings that I don't leave stuff out. For example, you might think that this chained fence behind him isn't that important, 
But I actually think it really is because that context says something about who he is as a person. And I don't want to leave that out. So even back here, I'm adding in all of that chain fence area. Okay, so let's start to block out some of the eye socket area. He's got these very high dramatic eyebrows. So I'm going to dramatize those a little bit more. And then his cheekbones, I need to accentuate those some more. Um, let's try to locate the nose. I would say maybe the nostrils are about there. His eyes a little bit tilted. I need to get the eye sockets a little stronger. This is actually mostly in shadow. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to fill this whole area with shadow. I know that seems a little bit ridiculous to do that early on, but I need to get a better grip on the lighting situation in order to do anything that's going on. Okay, looks like I'm halfway through. So let's start getting more specific. His mustache is like such a strong defining feature. So I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time getting that up and running like this. And then the hat is super dramatic. So let's just block it in real dark. Just It's only a five minute drawing, so who cares? Let's just make this thing a mess. That is totally cool with me. Okay, and he's got these, oh God, he's got like five piercings or something like that. And he's got the hair. I think I made that a little bit, ugh, crap. You guys ever do that when you're drawing? You just go, crap, this is not working. Okay, let's get to his mouth. His mouth is always open. I noticed that like every single screenshot I took, his mouth is open. Okay, let's try to get the eyes a bit bolder. Nostrils have to get blocked in as well. God, this needs a lot of work. Okay, that's fine. You know, guys, it's okay to make a crappy drawing. You gotta make crappy drawings. If you wanna make a good one, that's just kind of the way it has to be. Okay. All right, still got a minute left, you guys. Let's see if I can salvage this hideous portrait that I'm working on. I'm not saying he's hideous. I'm saying my drawing is hideous. I'm curious to know, tell me in the chat and I'll check it later. Do you guys have this inner monologue when you're drawing? I really shouldn't. I mean, normally I'd be like listening to a podcast or something like that, but um, this is pretty much what's going through my mind if I'm not listening to a podcast. Okay. Ugh. Oh my God, what a mess. Oh my God, <laughs> this is horrific. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, the nose needs a little more. Yeah, I did not get, his mustache is a lot bigger than I made it. So I got to dramatize that some more. And there's this crease in his face that's pretty dramatic. There's more of it over here on this side, like that. And, oh, I didn't get the lines in his plaid shirt. Because even if I'm not going to go in and make them perfect, I still want to indicate that they're there. All right. And then at the very least, he's, he's got all the patterning that is necessary. Okay, and then we'll put in a little bit of his lettering up here. And then that, at the very least, gets everything in the piece. Okay, let's take a look at the comments. Let's see. I try not to draw around people because I always yell crap and swear when I'm drawing. Well. Me too, except that I'm not gonna swear because we're gonna get demonetized <laughs> if I do that, but in theory, I would be doing that. Ripple of Aqua says, oh gosh, I talk to my drawings and paintings all of the time like therapy. 10,000 Crows says, I do have an inner monologue that monologue like that. Uh, it's so cool to know you have one too. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know that we're all nuts, right? That's pretty much what we're all saying. Keith Larson says, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't have an inner monologue, it's weird. Sarah Manuel says, oh no, oh no, oh no. Yep, that's pretty much what's going through my mind right now. Wilson is saying, I think just for drawing in front of other people, super scary. When I did it in my figure drawing class, it was a mess of imposter syndrome. Devan Studio says, I can't manage to keep my monologue internal. Okay, well, it's good to know that we're all nuts. This is great. I feel like less of a crazy person. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna switch to the brush. Well, no, I'm gonna do another five minute with the colored pencil because I, ugh, that drawing was so bad and I feel the need to redeem myself. So let's move on to this one.
oh man, people, this this is just priceless. Like, I just cannot believe this photo. It's like, really, people? You thought this was a good idea? <laughs> like, all right. So let's make this one five minutes. And I'm only going to draw the woman because I don't think I can do two in five minutes. Okay, so let's get, let me see. I just want to make sure I'm making her about the right size. Okay, here we go. So five minute pose. I'm just going to do the female. Okay, and I'm going to focus because I feel a little bit more warmed up. I still feel extremely out of it, but warmed up and out of it is better than not warmed up and out of it. So, you know, lesser of two evils. Okay, she's got this funny hair. What's up with those earrings that she's wearing? Okay, and she also has this tilt to the head. Actually, I think I made the head a little too small. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so her head tilts this way. There's her trapezius. For those of you who are anatomy nerds, she's wearing this necklace and then her shoulder comes down like this. Okay, and she's got like super bright patterns and everything. I probably won't have time to get into those, but I'll do the best I can. Okay, now this hat, she's, well, I don't know if it's a hat, it's something, is very prominent. So I don't usually go this dark that fast, but the thing is this is so intensely graphic and I feel like these eyes are, are more important in some ways than hers. They're, they're sort of, to me, more the priority than she is. So I'm just gonna work on that for a hot second, get that better established and then Okay, feeling a little better, guys, but I have not gotten to the face yet. Okay, so the, the face is funny. It's like tilted. And I'm going to look for these creases, try to accentuate her, her jawbone. So this is her jawbone. I got to find her, hang on, this is her cheekbone. That's her jawbone. There's the chin. Okay, now the, the lip, I'm going to try to get the bottom lip in here. I just want to place it. I'm not actually going to draw it just yet. Okay. And the eyes are weird. They're, they're like a little bit obscured underneath her mask. So actually I'm going to lower the mask a little bit. All right. Like this. All right. She's wearing a lot of makeup. Okay. That definitely makes it a little bit more challenging. And you know something else? This photo has like the most terrible flash photography lighting on it. So it's like making it really hard to see the form actually. Like the quality of your photo it really can make or break your experience. Oh shoot, I put the hair all the way up there? Crap, okay, hang on. All right, let's make that, oh, I see. Okay, it's more down here. And then this space is a little smaller. Okay, and now this is the shoulder. Okay, now I think I understand that space a little bit better. Um, and now the lip, yeah, she's got this really dramatic smile, <laughs> all these teeth. Ugh. Oh my God, this is not a flattering portrait. I mean, the photo is not that flattering to begin with either, but that's okay. Okay. All right, the lighting is funky too. It's like there's like a cast shadow here, but I don't really feel like I want to accentuate that too much because it might make it really hard to see things. Okay, let's get more detail. Oh, she's got this um, like necklace, not necklace. It's, is it a necklace? I have no idea what she's wearing. Okay, and you know, I am gonna start to put in, because there are these like paw print things down here at the bottom. And while I'm not gonna do them all, I do think it says a little something about who she is, what she's wearing. These types of things, in my opinion, do make a difference. So yeah, I mean, I probably should be spending more time on the face but I feel like I need to define who she is first before I do that. Okay, let's do some more structural stuff. Her, her lip is ugh, horrible. Do you guys do this? Do you just like tell yourself you're horrible? Like, <laughs> what other pro profession do people do this? I don't know. Maybe people do this in medicine, who knows? Okay, maybe scientists do this all the time. I have no idea. I don't really have any scientist friends. Okay, I do have friends that are doctors. I have friends that are lawyers but I don't really have any friends that are like research scientists or anything. Okay, let's get a little more tone. And actually, you know, I really need to color this section up here because this is pretty dark. If anything, just to show a color change because this section really is white 
in color and this section really is darker and I do want to I'm going to do just a little bit of shading across her whole face because she really yeah there's like a lot of cast shadow in this and then also to accentuate the chin a little bit more okay cool got through that one all right let's see what you guys are saying Ironhold Sentry says, I feel like if I stare at Carol Baskin for too long, I'll just lose my mind in her eyes and smile. Slepnir says, it's good to show how it is. If it were too perfect, it would show it's not a process. Absolutely. Erasmo says, I believe the hats are the main eye catchers in this image, even over the faces. Ironhold Sentry says, I also feel like sometimes a quick sketch of a person almost reveals more than a person, than a photo of a person can. And Paula Perez says, you're totally capturing her crazy smile. I don't know. I think I underdid it. I think that she's actually a little bit more zealous than I made her. 10,000 Crows is imagining a surgeon having this kind of internal monologue while doing surgery. I'm really hoping that they don't. <laughs> uh, Ripple Vakwa says, what's your stance on the red and shiny nose style that some artists are doing nowadays? Where are you seeing that Ripple of Aqua? Is that in illustration? Or are you seeing that on Instagram? I don't know what that's from. I mean, I'm thinking maybe that is handed down from Norman Rockwell because he's somebody who did that all the time. Okay, let's do another one. And I'm gonna switch to a brush pen now because um, I need to switch things up a little bit. So for these, let's see, I probably want one that's really light and I probably want one that is sort of in the middle. Let me see these. Okay, so these are the ones that I'm gonna use for the next one. Okay, let's see. Go to the next slide and we're gonna do this guy. And honestly, the reason I picked this guy is because he's sitting right next to this teddy bear. It's just the funniest thing to me. Like, a teddy bear is just such a character. I feel like he's being interviewed with the teddy bear so anyway let's get started with this so this again i'm going to do a five minute pose and maybe the one after that i'll do a 10 minute pose okay so let's start with five minutes okay and this one i really am going to try to draw like the scene i'm not going to just focus on the figure and he's doing this really dramatic pose Tell me in the chat if you guys ever sketch with markers. I think some people don't like sketching with them because you can't erase. And I know for some people that feels very stressful, but in some ways, the fact that I can't erase it, I feel like it releases me from feeling like I should fix everything. It's like it forces you to confront all your mistakes and just accept them. Say, yep, that's it. I messed up. Okay, that's... That's the end of that. And sometimes I find that a little bit refreshing. We gotta get this teddy bear in. This teddy bear is just the greatest thing. Okay, I don't have my red brush pens here. Otherwise I would totally give him that shiny red nose. Okay, but I do like the way his figure is like nestled in and here's his leg. And I do wanna show the fur of it. And actually the couch that they're sitting on, there's so many patterns, my God. These people are really into their patterns, aren't they? This is probably some place that Lauren Welch, our teaching artist, <laughs> would like to hang out because she's really, really into patterns. Okay, by the way, guys, tell me what you're noticing about how I'm doing my gesture drawings. Is there anything I'm doing that surprises you? Am I drawing exactly the way you thought I would based on how I teach? because this is an experiment. I haven't really done this live drawing thing before because it's a little bit stressful to draw live. But if you guys are finding that you are learning something from this and this is helpful, maybe it's something we can do on a more regular basis. I just don't know because this is one big experiment. I mean, art prop is one big experiment, so that is not new, but anyway, all right. See, I already feel better with the brush pen. The brush pen, I don't know, I feel more at ease. Maybe it's because it glides better across the page. I don't know. I felt a little stressed out when I was using the colored pencils. But also, I haven't used colored pencils in a while. 
Okay, let's get some of these shapes. Like actually these lines here that are part of the couch, these are pretty important. Let me move this aside so you guys can see that better. Okay, now let's dig into some of the mid-tones. So let's get in some of this stuff. Actually, this one's not really dark enough. Let me get another one that I think would be better. Yep, this one's more. Uh, this one might be too dark. All right, maybe I'll just go back to this one. Okay, um, you know what? I changed my mind. <laughs> I get it too dark because I, I need the dark to help me define this there. I really, I, I feel like for some reason, this drawing of mine is more about the bear than it is about the guy who's sitting there talking about things. So let's just block in some of these darks. And yeah, I don't know. I, I was sort of thinking when I was drawing this that I was drawing this guy, the guy that's actually being um, interviewed, but I'm finding myself actually more attracted to the things that are around him. And so that I think is always interesting to me to say, okay, what is it that I want to draw and why? Why do I want to draw that teddy bear more than I want to draw this person? I mean, for me, part of this is that he's sitting next to this teddy bear like it's his companion or something. But it's funny to me that this ended up being more of my focus. Okay, let's get his arm in there. Yeah, he's got a lot of dark. This is more part of his t-shirt. Some good negative space. Negative space is always helpful. And yeah, this is tricky. He's got all these um, patterns on his legs. These are pretty hard to do right now, but I'm going to look at the part of his shorts. There's some stuff down here. Start to lean on some of that. It's got some gray tones in there. I think definitely the teddy bear needs some of that. If anything, just to show the color difference of the body. Like that. Anything, I just want to separate out his shirt from his clothing. And I feel like in a five minute gesture, that's okay. That's, if that's all I have time to do, that's fine. I don't think it has to be something that is so finished. Actually, I really like the direction of this fur up here. So I'm just gonna go a little crazy with that. Okay, cool. So that's another five minute pose. Let's see what you guys are saying up here. Salty person says you draw exactly how I thought you draw, but it's still pretty magical. <laughs> All right. Paula says, I'm definitely learning a lot watching this. I think seeing the process is insightful. Seeing Professor Lou sketch frantically is fascinating, very relatable, says Ironhold Century. And let's see, Maria Kilson says, I have to warm up with pencils before going to brushes. I find fascinating how each artist uses each material in which they find, quote, easier. And Wilson is saying, honestly, I think the fact that he chose to sit next to a teddy bear in an interview <laughs> says more about him than any facial feature. Exactly. Like that's the stuff that you get from watching the show that you wouldn't get if you just Googled a photo of them. Diana Parker says, this one seems more like painting than drawing given the choices you're making. And let's see. Annie Helgelson says, yeah, they're prosthetics. Kat VFG says, you're most focused on the bear because it's all about the animals. <laughs> Great job. Love it. All right, cool. Let's do one that's a little bit longer now, you guys, so I can um, spend a little bit more time on it. So let's see what my next thing is. Okay, this one is him on a microphone because he seemed like somebody who, oh, wait, I skipped over this one. Hang on. This is a good one. Okay, this is a great portrait. So why don't we do this one for the last drawing? And this one I'm going to do for 10 minutes. So this will give me more time to really develop this further. And this one, I think I'll do in brush pen because I feel like I'm ready to start doing that. Okay, let's get started. And I'm gonna set my timer for 10, 10 minutes. Okay, there's my timer. And I got to pull up my slide and okay, here we go. This is really fun. He's got a great facial expression in this one. It's just very, very dramatic. Okay. So now guys, you know, what just went through my mind is I just thought, oh, I have more time. I can be more careful. Now, don't do that. Okay. That is a trap. Don't let yourself fall into that. That is not a good idea. I just fell into that trap myself. Um, that's very common where people, 
all of a sudden they lose their sense of gesture because they think, oh, slow down. Now I can just do whatever and take my time. But the thing is, if you do that, you actually end up losing a lot of that initial energy that you had in the earlier, shorter gestures. So I'm going to try really hard not to do that because I already had that thought. Like I totally know better than to have that thought, but I had it anyway. So it goes to show you that experience is not everything. Experience helps, but it doesn't help if you don't remember to do things. God, his nose is like, sheesh. Okay, let's get this more dramatic. All right. Wow, this is just like wonderland of forms. Okay, so the mustache is very dramatic. And I'm going to get the lower lip first. Oh, crap. I think I made the chin too small. Shoot. Okay. Maybe this can come down a little bit more. That's one of the reasons I really like to sketch light for so long. He's got these really dramatic beads down here. Okay. And let's get in some of his collar. I guess he likes flannel a lot. <laughs> he seems to be wearing flannel in a lot of these. Okay. Yeah, background's not very interesting here. Oh, well. Okay. Let's get that back in. Okay. Now to tackle the eyes, what I usually look for is the top lid first, just as a guideline, I find the lower lid and he's got some bags under his eyes, which actually helps. It's very helpful when people have bags under their eyes because you can follow it. I think a lot easier when people um, don't have a lot of wrinkles they are actually, I think a little bit harder to draw because there's not as many like landmarks for how to draw them. Okay, let's get his ear in there and his earrings. And his hair over here is like very, this, this is like totally out of a pre-Raphaelite painting. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I need to block in his mustache. I don't really want to do it with something dark just yet though. because I'm not feeling that confident about that, but I do want to move his chin down because I do think that was a good idea actually. So let's just block in a little bit of the neck and maybe some of this. Yeah, the shadows are pretty dramatic. Like this is all pretty dark. I'll go over that again later. Okay. And again, guys, tell me your observations. Tell me what you're learning. Tell me what you're seeing from this experience because my art professor soul needs to be told that you guys are learning all the time, right? Okay. So let's tackle those teeth because I think that's pretty important to get in there. And maybe the lower lip block some of that in. Okay, I'm almost ready, I think, to transition to something darker. Oh, crap, I feel like I didn't make him, shoot, he looks too upright. I feel like I need to switch the gesture a little bit more. Maybe his neck needs to come out. I don't know. I'll... Oh, you know what? It's the... Okay, the ear is too far to the left. I think that's what it is. Okay, and then that moves the... Okay, so the hat needs to come out more. Okay, hopefully some of those changes made a big difference. Okay. All right, let's get in there with some darker colors and see what I can do to rescue some of this. Oh, crap. I feel like... Oh, wait, this is the wrong marker. Hang on a second. This marker... Okay, I do think I need more here. Yeah, I think I didn't. Okay, so I did color in quite a bit of this, but it should be okay because I want to get in some of the darks now. Um, you know, I don't think I'm going to use this dark. I have this other brown that's a little bit juicier. So let's see what we can do with this. I'm going to try to be more selective about how I draw things. And another thing I'm noticing is I am not exaggerating enough. I think that I am trying to draw it too much just as it is and I'm struggling because I'm not making as big of a deal of his expression as I could. It's already a caricature and I think I can do a lot better. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more deliberate about showing more of that caricature. Okay and now with the eyes I'm actually going to go in and get more specific in there his eyes are like a little squished because he's smiling so much. Uh, okay, here we go. And 
then his, he's got really expressive eyebrows. Like in all of them, his eyebrows look like really elevated. Okay, now let's get in. Yeah, and there's this like really bright like twinkle in his eyes. So I'm gonna try to preserve that as best as I can. Okay, now the hat I really gotta tackle because that is not something I can put off. Okay, especially the contour of it is really important. So let's just block some of that in. And actually, I can't really see it that well in the photo, but he does have some wrinkles up here in his forehead. I mean, if I had time, I would like blend all this out, but probably not gonna have time to do that. So let's just at the very least acknowledge the rest of that. Oh, this whole area with his ear is such a mess. What did I do? Okay. You know what? I need to get these earrings in here because these are such a defining feature. Okay, this is it with the neck. See, this is what I did. I made it too straight. So now I'm going to pull it back out to there. Oh, crap. Hang on. All right, wait, wait, wait. All right, what's happening there? Okay, what? Oh, this is the collar. Okay, tell me if this monologue sounds familiar. <laughs> or if I'm the only one. I don't think I am. Because we're all similar in that way, I think, a lot of the time. Okay, let's get some of this in. And I really got to put in these great wrinkles. I love these wrinkles he's got. Got to put in his... The bags of his eyes, this double eyelid, same here. Oh, and he's got like a piercing up here. It's a little bit hard to see. Okay. Oh, and I got it. Okay. I only got two minutes, guys. <laughs> I have to finish up this mustache or it's just not going to happen. And I have to do the mouth. So let's get all that in there. Okay. So the teeth are pretty tricky. So I got to get in here and show some of the lines and you know maybe i'll switch back to oh wait that's the wrong color shoot okay i should have not mixed all my colors up okay crap all right maybe i'll add another over there all right let's just put in a couple of finishing touches so he doesn't look totally <laughs> like a mess definitely needs more time. Let's do a little bit on his neck just to make it a little bit more accentuated. Like that. Because even though I'm not going to finish this drawing, I still want it to capture like a complete image, even though it's not done. I, I feel like that sounds very strange, but at the very least, it, it comes to some degree of finish in terms of having addressed everything that I want to address in the piece. Uh, this probably Okay, let's do one more pass with this like dark gray color because I think this would actually help a lot under here. And actually with his nose, he's got this really dramatic. I didn't get that either. Okay, guys, I got 45 seconds. Let's do this. Let's make this happen. Okay, his neck needs more for sure. This is all pretty dark too, and this is all very dark. So let's just get that in. Okay. 24 seconds, guys. Let's see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> he's, he's got a couple wrinkles here. I really want to put these in. I totally did not. There we go. Whew! Okay. That is my 10 minute brush pen drawing. Let me see what you guys are saying. Um, maybe that's why many artists say pro natural beauty instead of Botox nations, says Maria Kilson. Seacoast is saying your confidence in placing your marks is admirable. Suffer from wanting perfection. Always pencil for me. 
And Ironhold Sentry saying, capturing the essence of a character is really important rather than painstakingly copying the reference. And Diana Parker says, placing the insides of the eyes to determine proportions of the face. Wow, you guys are really doing an awesome job with this. Let me see. I'm going to scroll back a little bit more. Um, let's see. Ironhold Sentry says, interesting how with such limited colors and tones, you can display this realized character. Paula says, your drawings have way more character than the photos. I don't know. <laughs> Joe Exotic's pretty <laughs> dramatic of a character, I would say. Uh, let's see. Salty Person says, I followed along on this one. And in conclusion, yours is better. Lauren Fanning says, I love it. Really play to the strength of the unique brush pen marks. Wowza says, slept near. Louise Olympia says, this is really helpful. His expression is hilarious. I totally feel like I need to draw for like another two hours though. Like to me, this is like barely skimming the surface of getting my mind into the place that I need to go. So here's my question, you guys. Do you want me to do one more drawing? Because I will, I'm sort of ready to do that. I know the stream's getting really long, but I'm feeling like, okay, I'm just starting to get into that mindset. So you know what? I think I'm gonna do another one because I just really want to redeem myself. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Okay, let's find a good one. Um, this one's a little bit tame. Uh, okay, I'm gonna skip the lady. I wanna do, a, oh, okay, wait, wait, this guy is great. Let me see, oh, no, 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 we gotta do this guy. The I think he's the ex-husband, I have no idea. Okay, anyway, let's do the ex-husband because he's got a great face as well. Okay, so let's, again, let's do 10 minutes for this one and I'm gonna do it with brush pens as well. So let's start there. Okay, let's go, because I'm just starting to get into this. Okay, hang on, I gotta do my, uh, get to my right slide. So here we go. Yeah, this guy's great. He's such a character. I mean, we did not have models that look like this when I went to art school. And his face is like, wow, it's really wide. It could just be the angle that he's sitting at that makes it look really wide, but I don't know. It just seems oddly wide compared to what you might expect. And I'm also going to put in his chain as well. And he's got a tilt too. And crap, I did not do that. Okay, hang on. We, we got to retilt this whole thing. Okay, we're going to retilt. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, hang on. No, 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 no. Okay, ear is more here. I think this tilts more. I think, is that? No, this ear is over here. I mean, you guys are probably noticing there's a lot of questioning, I think, in this process. Like, you're never really sure. And everything, I think, for me, at least in the beginning, is an approximation. You're like, oh, it's about here. I might change it later. But let's just see. Okay, I don't want to do the eyes just yet. I just got to find, like, the top line of the mouth. Let's see. All right, he's got sort of a funny smile too. His mouth is really wide. So let's get that in there. Oh, yikes. That is scary looking. Okay. I did that again. I made the chin too small. Crap. That means the neck is, oh, right. Hang on. The, the necklace is down here. Okay. Here we go. Let's just fix it. Okay. Okay. He's also got, everybody in this show has so many piercings. Okay. And there's a lot of light. Ugh. All right, now this eye is pretty clear looking. So I'm actually going to put in a little bit of the pupil right away because this. Oh, shoot. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. Okay, I'll try to not cover up so much stuff, but even this early, I just want to get in some shading because he's got a lot of shadow like his whole ear is in shadow this one not so much i don't think i made his neck wide enough i think the neck should be this way right yeah that's a little bit better okay and then there's sort of the, the neck over there okay his eyebrows are more dramatic 
this is such a funny expression. Like, I can't tell if he's smiling or if he's laughing or afraid. It's a really weird expression. Oh my God. And I'm so excited to draw his like three teeth. Oh, poor guy. I had to have a molar pulled a few months ago. You guys might've read about this on my Instagram. It was not fun. So I feel for people who are missing teeth because it's really awful. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I need to define this eye better. And I want his, uh, I guess I could use, I probably need another marker that's like a little bit lighter, but I'm not gonna bother right now because I'm gonna run out of time really quickly. Okay, let's get in there with some dark stuff. And actually this time I'm gonna use a slightly different marker. I mean, he almost has these like, angelic eyes does anybody else see that like he, he looks almost childlike in a way the way that his eyes are open they're they're very funny and his eyebrows are pretty textured so i'm going to try to show that as well he doesn't have the same bags under his eyes oh my god i think i made that way too big Okay, well, I am going to try to do a little bit of his facial hair because his facial hair, again, like Joe Exotic, is very dramatic. And he's got this very dramatic cast shadow on his nose. Let me block that in. Okay, the mouth, I really, oh my God, guys, I'm so excited to draw the mouth. Okay, I shouldn't be excited about him not having teeth, but it really makes for a cool looking drawing in my opinion. Oh man. Okay, wow, he does have his facial hair is actually surprisingly textured. I didn't think it was going to be so textured, but there there actually is a lot. Okay. Like especially on the edges, you, you can see how textured his facial hair actually is. Okay. Yeah, here it's like wow, this is like super textured here. The thing is it's it's not that like it's not super hairy though. I don't know. I think I'm making the hair a little bit too dramatic. Let's see. Yeah, and this cast shadow is super dramatic. And actually you can see, like, do you guys see here? You can see like the direction of his skin. And actually here's where his tattoo begins. So I'm just gonna quickly block that in. Tattoos are actually, they're really hard to draw on people because they, they just make everything look super flat. So they're, they're tricky, not easy to do. And at the very least, I want to just hint at his gold chain because that's a very important, I think, defining feature of this person. I would not want to do this portrait without that. Okay, and there's, there's actually quite a bit of facial hair over here on this side. Okay, we can't leave this eye alone for so long. So let's jump back up there. Okay. God, guys, I miss drawing. Like I have not drawn remotely as much as I should be. I've just been so busy. Online teaching, I, I'm not talking about our prop. I'm talking about like teaching at RISD, doing the online classes. It's really exhausting. It's like three times the amount of work because you can't talk to the students in person like you normally do. Okay, let's, I think it's a little hard to see, but I think his hair does come up to here. Okay, and let's get in a little bit more of his ear. Okay, I think, oh crap, I only got three minutes left. Okay, let's do this. All right. I need a mid-tone because it's a little bit too dramatic with just the two colors. So let me see if in a few minutes I can just get some of that in there. Is this the same color? No, let's get... Maybe this gray again. Okay, here we go. Yep, this will be better. This will help me fill in some of those more dramatic areas. Like especially his mouth really needs a lot of work. There we go. Oh, 
I wish I had more time to work on his facial hair. He's got great facial hair. Like, this is really, really fun. Oh, God, now I'm, like, bumming. that I don't feel like I did a good job with his mouth. And his mouth is fantastic. He's got a great mouth. Okay, let, let's really, <laughs> let's redeem the mouth. I just, I got to get this facial hair in there because it's such an, actually, his fulcrum, that's what I'm missing, guys. The fulcrum is no good. Here, here we go. There's the fulcrum. Okay, yeah, that really helps a lot. Okay, and then maybe defining more of the lip is helpful as well. Okay, this is probably a little more dramatic than it should be, the facial hair over there, but that's okay. This guy is such a character. It's great. Actually, you can see some more of his... Ah, okay, I got one minute. <laughs> I'm going to do it. i got to add the facial hair. That's coming down his neck. And these wrinkles that come across. Oh crap, and he's got wrinkles up here too. Love wrinkles, they're so much fun to draw. I think I smushed his head, didn't I? I think I did. I think he's like all squished. Oh well, too late now. Okay, let's get the rest of that. All right. His nose, I think, got a little too wide, so maybe I need to get this a little darker. Crap. Crap, crap! What was it we were saying earlier about saying crap? There, that'll help. Yeah, I wish I had time to go in and do all the facial hair, because the facial hair is just, oh, it's great. Beautiful textures big fan of texture. And just a little bit more down here, especially on his neck. This is actually a lot of hair on the neck area. Okay, guys, that is time. <laughs> Let's see what you guys are saying. Okay, Annie Hagelson is saying, how much do you consider color when you do gestures? Like, do you just use whatever or do you pick certain colors ahead of time? Usually, Annie, I just pick random colors. I'm like, okay, these are the brush pens that I'm using because there's just not enough time. I mean, in a five, 10 minute pose, there's just no chance that you're ever gonna really be able to see that. Um, let me pop up the chat so I can see a little bit better um, what you guys are saying. Let's see. Maria Kilson says, I think I do better with a time limit, such as 10 minutes if I had to draw people with only seconds or like a minute. It would feel like a relief. Well, that's the thing. I think if, if you guys give yourselves forever to draw, it almost makes you feel like you should have a great drawing. But if you say, well, I only had two minutes, it's easier to let go of that and say, okay, I only had two minutes. That's fine if it didn't turn out very good. Emily Wilkins says, I like how your impressions of the people's characters come through in the marks you're making. It's not just a copy of the reference image. And let's see mc says love the result you again captured the spirit builder d says this activity would also be great as a draw along with illustration cartoony style all right well let me give you guys the rest of the information on the art dare because remember we are going to be doing these um featured entries video which we've been doing every month and they've been really really fun because you can see all the other entries remember we have prizes honorable mentions and we also have prize winners, different prizes. If you're international, then if you're US resident, US residents get to get art supplies. People who are international get portfolio critiques and all that cool stuff. By the way, we did change a little bit how to submit your art dare. Now the Instagram thing is the same. So those of you guys who have been submitting on Instagram, just keep doing what you're doing. You use hashtag artprofdare, tag us on artprof. Now, if you are somebody in the past who used to email me or post on the Facebook page, we actually now have a new upload form, okay? So just go to the May Art Dare page. There's gonna be a big button and it will take you to this submission form so you can enter your Art Dare, okay? So again, we're not accepting the submissions by email or the Facebook page anymore. And instead, I want you guys to use the submission form. But if you're on Instagram, honestly, that is the best way to get us your Art Prof Dare submission. And remember, you guys, we also have the Art Dare Leap. So in case you guys missed that part of it, 
if you want to watch along, I'm going to be watching these movies too. A lot of these movies I've seen before, but a lot of them I haven't seen for a while. Like, I can always watch more Sherlock. <laughs> That's no problem. I could watch that over and over again. Twilight Zone, like Water for Chocolate, these are all great movies. You don't have to watch these movies, but you can if you want, and we can chat about them, especially in Discord, which is where I'm going to be after this live stream. And I'll probably post some photos of these gesture drawings so you can all judge me. <laughs> That's fine. I put myself out there. That's what I'm asking for. And hang out on our prof.org, see some of our free resources, subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you guys so much. Those of you who are top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible, thank you to all of you guys for your wonderful, thoughtful comments. I really hope you guys do the art there. This is going to be a really fun one. Everybody, stay safe. I'll see you next time.